think we can start. Oh, I said we have done it. Okay. I'll read each sentence and we'll discuss it. You are right. Okay. All conduct and action are part of the movement of a power, a force, infinite and divine in its origin and secret sense and will, even though the forms of it we see seem inconscient and ignorant, material, vital, mental, finite, which is working to bring out progressively something of the divine and infinite in the obscurity of the individual and collective nature. Big sentence, we'll look at each phrase and see what it's saying. One, two, three, four, five, six lines. So first of all, he's saying that in the universe, there is a vast movement of power, movement, storms, okay? The whirling of planets and the comets coming and going and the rivers flowing, all this is part of a plan. And that plan is, uh, the origin of the plan is the infinite divine, right on top. But he delegates his power of action to the nature. So nature is acting here and in the universe it is nature. At the highest level, nature is conscious, fully conscious and fully with a will. But when this, as we know, there is a diminution when it comes down. So when that divine mother, the Shakti, Chit Shakti, when she comes down, she appears to be unconscious and mechanical. In the physical world, all the movements in nature seem to be mechanical and unconscious. But there is consciousness hiding inside. And the whole thing is being manipulated and governed by the Supreme sitting on top. Okay? And we are, our small actions are only part of this universal action. Okay? We may think that we are acting independently, but that's absolutely a, a wrong notion. We are acting under the impulsion of nature. What we are doing, nature is allowing us to do. It is permitting. That which nature allows you to do, you are doing. And you think that you are doing. But actually, it is nature which is doing that. Okay, so that's what he's saying in this sentence. And everything... Yeah, tell me. Tell One me. question. So the conscience also is created by the divine? Yes, absolutely. No doubt about it. <laughs> because as we said, there is a diminution. Na? When they come down from the highest to the lowest, there is a diminution. There is a lessening. It becomes less and less and less. What becomes less? Everything. Consciousness becomes less. Power becomes less. Ananda also becomes less. Why? Again, we go back to that famous uh, thing that manifestation means form. Okay, manifest without form, there can be no manifestation. Okay, all forms. So, <clears throat> when a poet has got a poem in his head and he doesn't speak it out or write it out, it is unmanifested. So, when he writes it down on paper, it is manifested. Then it has a form, the form of words and sentences. Okay, or it could be even in sound. So, the manifestation is a, always a diminution. And form is a limitation. Every form, a stone, is a small limitation of matter, universal matter. So therefore, even the inconscient is made by the divine only. Okay? So your question is quite correct. Okay? But it is not the full divine. The divine creates the inconscient but is hiding in it. Okay? There is a... <clears throat> A hiding action, veiling, as Ramdo says. He veils himself to create the forms. Okay? And your action is just one small, one iota of this universal action. You think you are acting on your own, but that's a big illusion. That's what he's saying in the Bible. Okay? So, <clears throat> let me carefully see. All conduct and action are part of a movement of a power, a force, infinite and divine in its origin. So power, force, infinite and divine is, force, infinite is nature and divine in its origin. So that is the Jagan Mata, the Chit Shakti at the highest level. 
very secret. And secret sense and will, even though the forms of it we see here, we see in the physical world, seem inconscient or ignorant, material, vital, mental, finite, which is working to bring out progressively something of the divine and infinite in the obscurity of the individual and collective nature. Now look at that. Okay, It is acting on two levels, at the individual level as well as the collective level. And this whole thing, what he's saying, we can put into one word, which is working to bring out progressively something of the divine and infinite. This is the evolution he's talking about in the obscurity of the individual and collective nature. Even when individuals rise into the higher consciousness, okay, then every individual who rises into the higher consciousness is adding a wee bit of advantage to the evolution in the collective, in nature. So when the time comes when sufficient number of people have gone up, then nature also benefits. Okay, so that's what Sri can I Can I ask you something? Go ahead. All all the earthquakes, cyclones, storms, avalanches, are yes. they all divine in origin? Absolutely. Absolutely. First of all, all the negatives are not negatives as we see them. They are only the complementary aspects of their opposites. Good and evil, hot and cold. These are dualities. So, and also there's another very, we don't need to go into great detail to understand this, but when you rise in consciousness, you see that the dualities are not opposites, but they are complementary aspects. Darkness is not the opposite of light. Darkness is the <clears throat> capacity of light to make itself less. Knowledge and ignorance are not opposites. Ignorance is the capacity it's a power. Sirna says ignorance is a power. It's a power <coughs> of knowledge to reduce itself. Why does it reduce itself? Because to, <coughs> to do a particular work that is best understood by the power. If I use too much power for a small job, then I'll ruin the job. So the power has to make itself less to do the work on hand. Okay. So that is exactly why all these avalanches. Also, there's another aspect. If I have got a certain a, a house I have got, okay, and then after 100 years, that house starts crumbling and becoming weak, and there are some, it becomes dirty, and very, um, the walls are full of um, dirt, then I have to build a new house. Then I have to break. So all these things which seem to break, avalanches, earthquakes, Okay, all these are necessary. And remember that the divine is constantly creating, and after it has created, he destroys it to create renew, re newer things. So constantly there is a destruction and a construction going on. So it is definitely divine ordered, ordered and ordained by the divine. Okay. But as I said, there is a gradation. At the lower level, the divine is hiding. He is veiled himself. And the veiling is necessary because we come back to the principle of diminution. Okay? So in the physical world, there is diminution. And that is being misinterpreted by the ascetics and the Buddhists. And they say, this physical world is permanently imperfect and full of evil. So we have to leave it and go up. Because there, at the higher levels, there is clarity, there is knowledge. There is Ananda, but here you will never find. That's Sri disagrees with because there's a revolution, and the revolution is slowly going towards the divine. It is so slow that the ascetics and the Buddhists get discouraged and they say, No, we want it faster. <laughs> so that is the reality. Okay? So <clears throat> I go to the next sentence. This power is leading towards the light. There you are. Okay? But very slowly. Okay? Evolution is very slow. And not only slow, but it's also spiral. It goes up and then comes down. It goes up and then comes down. But it is going up slowly. It's a spiral movement. Evolution is not a direct linear climb. It's not an ascent. 
it goes up and comes down, goes up and comes down. You can see that in history also. No? The Vedic period was great in spiritual knowledge. Then there was a loss of that because the material nature had not yet fully exhausted its potentialities. So science had to come up. And now we are much, much better off in the physical world. We have TVs, we have mobiles, we have cars, we have aeroplanes. Okay? This definitely help in many ways. Then, now the spiritual evolution can again restart. And that's exactly what Sri has done. He has brought down the super mind for the next stage of evolution. Okay? Then, yeah. And one question. Yeah. Go ahead. Evolution, the evolution is in a spiral form. The involution was a direct or spiral? Yes, no, it direct. <laughs> Not only direct, immediate. <laughs> immediate. Okay. Because... Why should the divine delay? He has got the full power. So when he imagines something, when he has knowledge, it will immediately come. Involution is not in time and space. Okay. Uh, sorry, it is not in a moment in time. It is not. Although science can say all sorts of things. Science says the Big Bang theory, it started 14 billion years ago. But that's nonsense. <laughs> it won't hold water. Because immediately you can ask, what happened before that? At the moment when the, the divine created the world, what happened? Suddenly he woke up and said, I have to create the world. I forgot. I was sleeping. So, that is, so therefore, science says there is no God. <laughs> so that's their explanation. But if you have believe in God, then it doesn't hold water at all, the theory. Even now it is being discarded even by the scientists themselves. So, involution is something outside time and it is eternal. It did not start at a moment in time. Okay? So, it is direct. It's very easy to understand that because if the divine is omnipotent, omniscient and omnipresent, okay, why should he hesitate? There is no question of hesitation. He knows what has to be done and does it. And it's perfect what he does. So, involution is immediate. It's not evolution. Because you are starting from darkness. By the involution, you are starting from light, knowledge, power, consciousness. So, it is immediate. There is no defect. But when you are starting from the bottom, which is the opposite, darkness, unconsciousness, powerlessness, okay, then you are starting from, and you have to struggle. You don't know which way to go. You go here, you find out it's a mistake. You go there, it find out a mistake. So slowly, slowly, it is going up. You discover your errors and correct yourself. Therefore, necessarily, it has to be a, a slow and winding process. It's exactly like, you know, you have to cross a, a forest and you don't know the forest. Will you be able to go straight to the, uh, the right path? No. You will go one direction and you'll say, oh... There's an obstruction here. There's a huge river. I can't go there. I have to come away. Then you go another place. It's full of scorpions and serpents. Say, oh my God, I can't do that. I have to go. So you have to go on looking and finding a path and actually building a path also. So that's exactly what the evolution does. Evolution is starting from darkness, ignorance, and unconsciousness. That's why it is slow. Okay, so we go to the next para, uh, next sentence. This power is leading towards a light, but still through the ignorance. Okay, so it leads man first through his needs and desires. So, if you remember, this is standard of conduct number one. Okay, his needs and desires are the important thing. Ego needs and desires at the animal level. That's exactly it. It guides him next through enlarged needs and desires, modified and enlightened by mental and moral ideal. So, enlarged needs and desires, you have thoughts and you have more noble emotions also. And the desire also can be there to bring in beauty, bring in truth, bring in understanding, comprehension. Okay. So, this is also an enlarged need and desires. Even the desire can be for the betterment of society. You want a better thing. 
So that's also possible. Then finally, you come to what we are saying, moral idea. So that's the third level. So first level, the individual needs and desires. Second, standard of conduct, social rules laid down to control the ego of the first level. Then the third level is moral, moral and ethics. Okay, you want something more true. So it's the mind that makes the ethics. Okay. When the mind is not there, there are no moral, more, no morality and no ethics. In the animal world, there is absolutely no morality. Okay, <laughs> no morality at all. The rule of the ego and the desire takes primary importance. Next sentence. It is preparing to lead him, which is the it, the power, the divine power. It's preparing to lead him to a spiritual realization that overrides all these things I added all, and yet fulfills and reconciles them in all that is divinely true in their spirit and purpose. Even in the physical world, everything is not falsehood. Everything is not negative. There are many, many good things also. So that even, that continues to be there. Okay. That fulfills and reconciles them in all that is divinely true in their spirit and purpose. <clears throat> it transforms the needs and desires into a divine will and ananda. So that's interesting. He's saying the need becomes a will. Okay. okay? The wanting to do something, the desire changes into a will. And the satisfaction of the desire becomes ananda. Okay. When you go to the higher, higher level, spiritual level, it transforms the mental and moral aspiration into the powers of truth and perfection that are beyond them. Beyond what? Beyond the mental and moral aspiration. Truth takes the replaces moral standards, truth. Okay? And perfection replaces your idea of perfection in the physical world. It substitutes for the divided straining of the individual nature, for the passion and strife of the separate ego, the calm, profound, harmonious, and happy law of the universalized person within us, the central being, the spirit, that's a portion of the Supreme Spirit. We we'll look at that sentence carefully. It substitutes for the divided straining of the individual nature. First of all, it is divided. What is divided? Everything. Your mind is divided from the vital, the vital is divided from the body. Okay. And they all seem to be separate. And not only that, I am divided from you, you are divided by your, by your children. Everything is divided. Everything is divided, it's based on division, straining of the individual nature, but the passion and strife of the separate ego. What does it replace it with? Calm, profound, harmonious, and happy law of the universalized person. When is this possible? When you become universalized. In other words, when you attain to the cosmic consciousness. The universalized person is one who has no ego and he feels that he is part of everybody and everybody is part of him, as it says in the Gita. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> the one who sees everything in himself and sees himself in everybody else. That's a cosmic consciousness. Okay? <laughs> Within us, the central being. Now, what's the central being? The central being, so remember, use the word central being to indicate the self or the psychic being. Both are the central being. Okay. Central being is the essential part of you which is immortal. It never dies. Your body, mind, life dies, but not the soul. And we are completely ignorant of the soul. But when you go to the second level, the level of the spiritual planes of consciousness, you can become cosmic. And when you become cosmic, then your ego disappears. <laughs> the ego is a small, condensed, like a, like a stone, okay? But when you go there, that dissolves and becomes big and disappears into the infinite. So, 
necessarily the cosmic constant is the opposite of the ego. The ego is a small knot. The universe is a vast extension, opposite. Okay? Within us, the central being, the spirit, that is a portion of the Supreme Spirit. Now, this is again in the Gita. Amsha Sanatana. The self, then the self is individual and also collective at the same time. The self is individual, this is my self, but you also see there is help of everybody else. Okay. But the psychic being is not like that. The psychic being is separate, but it can merge into the infinite. It gives you love and devotion. Okay. But the <laughs> unity may not come unless you go to the self. The psychic being, when it's very developed, can remain satisfied with itself with love and devotion to the Lord, or it can want knowledge and it can also merge into the self. Both are the central being. Remember these, these are words which you must remember how Srimdha uses them. When he says central being, it's very clearly the self and the psychic being. Okay? <clears throat> then, this true person in us, again, this is another way of talking, uh, another way of expressing his person with a PK. That person is the central being, it is also the psychic as well as the self. It is a true person. Why? Because there is a false person also which we think. We think that our body, mind, life is we are what we are. But that's a false person. It is something temporary. It is like a, a, a dwelling. Okay? It is like a hut you are living in. And that hut can get destroyed at the end of life. Okay? I am not saying palace. <laughs> I am not saying, I am saying hut, because that's exactly what it is. A very poor dwelling place. Okay, so <clears throat> this true person in us, because it is universal, does not seek its separate gratification. Gratification, the satisfaction of small desires. Okay, this is the gratification. But only asks in its outward expression in nature, its growth to its real stature. The psychic being is always wanting the truth and wanting to go to the divine. It, it wants to grow out of the ignorance and darkness of lower nature into the higher nature of the divine, divine real stature. The expression of its inner divine self, that transcendent spiritual power and presence within it, which is one with all and in sympathy with each thing and creature. So, one with all. Again, cosmic consciousness. And in sympathy, there is no enmity at all. Okay? You are in sympathy with each thing. Thing! Not only beings, but things. Okay? Even stones, even trees, even anything. Even things, inanimate. That also you feel part of yourself. And creature. Each thing and creature. And with all the collective personalities and powers of the divine existence. The personalities and powers of the divine existence, Bhutani, as the Sanskrit word is Bhutani, that which is created. Okay, everything. Stones, trees, insects, animals, everything. Part of that. It becomes your part of your consciousness. And yet, it transcends them and is not bound by the egoism of any creature or collectivity or limited by the ignorant controls of their lower nature. The ignorant controls of our lower nature is the mind which tries to control the vital and the body. Okay? That's a very limited and ignorant control. This is a high realization in front of all our seeking and striving. That's a goal. You have to go to the cosmic consciousness. And it gives the sure promise of a perfect reconciliation and transmutation of all the elements of our nature. Which are the elements of our nature? Superficially, mind, life, body. But there is also a, a subtle body, an inner vital, and an inner mind. Okay? All these are part of you. It makes completely, it becomes absolutely reconciled. At our level, the mind is fighting with the vital and the vital is fighting with the body 
and the mind is also fighting with the body. Okay. Very clear examples you can give to yourself. Okay. We don't think, we don't think of it as a fight. We think of it as something very natural. But the body is tired, but the mind says that I have to do my homework tomorrow and I have to do it. I'm putting pressure on the so it doesn't agree. But sometimes the body will say, No, I will not cooperate. I am too tired. I want to sleep. You go to sleep. Okay. Then the vital also has got a lot of uh, uh, desires. Because the mind says, no, no, you can't do that. Okay. <laughs> there is one boy who under a challenge ate 20 rasgullas. Now that's certainly what the vital may want, but certainly not what the mind wants. <laughs> so that's what they cause it war. I'm telling you a real, a real story, huh? <laughs> so there is a challenge also, a very interesting one. Someone, uh, yeah, I'm not mentioning names because you don't know these people. They have all gone. So there is a challenge that you can you drink 10 cold drinks. So the person said yes. <laughs> and he drank and spoiled his digestive power forever. Okay. <laughs> he used to suffer from stomach pains and all that, always after that. So, this war is not there at all in the higher planes of consciousness. Mind, life and body, and the inner and the outer mind, inner and the outer vital, inner and the subtle body and this gross body are absolutely in harmony with each other. That's what is A pure, total and flawless action is possible only when that is effective. And we have reached the height of the secret Godhead within us. Within us. Okay. So, secret Godhead, the psychic being, or when Sri Aurobindo says within us, he includes the above also as part of us. Because our surface being is only body, mind, life, but we really are a condensation of the universe. Everything that exists in the universe is part of us. The superconscient, the intraconscient, the subconscient, the inconscient, and also the whole world. That's the aura around you, right? What Sirdo calls it circumconscient. So all this is part of it. And this harmonization can come only when you reach the central being. That's what we see. Now we can read the next paragraph. Okay. What, what is this? this? What is the meaning of the word? Transmutation. Yeah, there is a transmutation and a transformation. So um, maybe there is a difference. Okay, we can check the dictionary, but essentially, I don't think it's making much difference. Suppose you are, you have got. In fact, Srinu gives his own example. Okay, he says when he was a child, he used to be afraid to go into the dark. Okay, when he was a child. Then, later on, he had to join the National Movement for Independence. All fear disappeared from him. Transformation or transmutation. That fear became completely gone. So that's transformation. Suppose you have a little bit of egoism and selfishness. When you reach the cosmic consciousness, that selfishness disappears. There's a transmutation. <coughs> I think the root of the words are different. Form, transformation, and transmutation. But uh, I don't know. Mutation is genetic. No, mutation is genetic, and form transform is the outer form. If we are talking of science, yes. yes. If we are talking of science. But even mutation in science also is form, no? Yes. Mutation, form mutates. For instance, yes. Caterpillar becomes the cocoon and the cocoon it becomes the butterfly. <laughs> it is transformation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have to change the dictionary for that. Okay, so shall we read the next one? The perfect supermental action. <clears throat> Would you nine. like me to read? Yes, do that. The perfect supramental action will not follow any single principle or limited rule. 
it is not likely to satisfy the standard either of the individual egoist or of any organized group minded. It will conform to the demand neither of the positive practical man of the world, nor of the formal moralist, nor of the patriot, nor of the sentimental philanthropist, nor of the idealizing philosopher. It will proceed by a spontaneous outflowing from the summits in the totality of an illumined and uplifted being, will and knowledge, and not by the selected, calculated, and standardized action, which is all that the intellectual reason or ethical will can achieve. Its sole aim will be the expression of the divine in us and the keeping together of the world and its progress towards the manifestation that is to be. This even will not be so much an aim and purpose as a spontaneous law of the being and an intuitive determination of the action by the light of the divine truth and its automatic influence. It will proceed like the action of nature from a total will and knowledge behind her, but a will and knowledge enlightened in a conscious supreme nature and no longer obscure in this ignorant property. It will be an action not bound by the dualities but full and large in the spirit's impartial joy of existence. The happy and inspired movement of a divine power and wisdom guiding and impelling us will replace the perplexities and stumblings of the suffering and ignorant ego. So, we have some time, what we can do is, basically what he's saying is, there is a large standard, Okay, it's super mental action. So the four standards of conduct, four standards here so first standard ego, second standard the social law, third standard the morality, and the fourth one is the spiritual life, spiritual supramental action, where there is total freedom. In the others, there's all there are laws that operate. There are laws that operate. And laws are opposite of freedom. But the highest level, total freedom. It will not be bound by any rules, neither rule of the first, nor second, nor third standard of conduct. Completely free. That we, the Gita said, Sarva Dharman Parityajya Mame Kam Sharanam Praja. So, exactly that. Then. Give up all standards of action and depend on me alone. That is what basically he is saying in the past. So, what I'll do, I'll just read the summary. If I have it, let me see. Yeah, I have it. Okay. What is saying in the para? The integral supramental action will have its own law, but that law is based on freedom. Okay. Our strangeness up. But without any fixity. It will be based on the complete freedom, not subject to any limitation of any kind. It will act unlike the other three lower laws. It will obey neither any individual, nor any group, nor any of their ideals, nor concepts. None of these will have any right of influence or action. On the practical man in the world, the formal moralist, the patriot, the sentimental philanthropist, the idealistic philosopher, all these will not have any effect on him at all. Its actions will be based not on intellectualities, nor on ethics, but on the truth, light, will, knowledge of the highest divine summits. It will aim to express the divine in the individual and the universe. Its action will be for the holding together and supporting the action of the world. Now in the Gita, it refers to Loka Sangrahan Artham. 
for the maintenance of the body. <coughs> it will be, he will be working. We could say that it will not, it will not even have an aim because it will be simply the spontaneous execution of the supramental law and an automatic intuitive action spurred by the highest divine truth. It will have no ignorance in its action and it will be completely free of all ego-based stumblings and sufferings. That's what he's saying in the para. Okay? Very clear. He's making a distinction between the lower standards and the supramental standards. I'm not sure whether he's talking about the supramental in his uh, normal way or is because there was a little bit of a confusion sometimes in the text. Because when he wrote all this, it was long before 1926. He wrote it in 1914 to 1920. So at that time, in his own mind also, he was not 100% sure of the difference between supermind and the planes of consciousness, over mind. He did not know. Okay. But when he achieved the overmind in 1926, much after he wrote all these things, okay, then he realized that there is still something else to be got, and that was the supermind. So, in other words, what I'm saying is when he's using the word supermind here, supramental, he may be meaning the spiritual planes of consciousness. Because even when the spiritual planes of consciousness, although it is not perfect, yet many of these things you can feel yourself to be free. You will have calm, you will have peace. Okay, all these things are there. Okay, so we stop here today. Yeah. Sandana, yes. Sir. After twenty six, after twenty six, he didn't edit this synthesis of yoga. No. Ninety percent, he did not. Okay. He added a few chapters, but he did not revise it. He revised the life divine thoroughly. Okay. Yeah, he revived the life divine in the 1940s. Okay. Yeah, but I think synthesis he did not touch much. And when someone asked him, he said that if I have to write synthesis again, I will completely rewrite the whole thing. So much more I have learned and I have knowledge. <laughs> okay. So then, then they said, but why not do it? Then he said, you do first what I have written. <laughs> <laughs> what I have written, you first achieve that. <laughs> Okay. So, Uruvar, everybody. Uruvar, 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 Uruvar,